about this one, Staines Morris. That sounds good. Tell you though, brother, we have witnessed great victories as this parliament in this war, but none of those victories would have been possible without the ordinary people, ordinary villagers, ordinary yeomen, ordinary tradespeople, and even the poorer sort of folk. Because none of this would have been possible without the people of London, who did rise up verily and righteously in the years 1640 to 1642, who did take to the streets persistently to get their just desserts. And though the Parliament sat, and though the King would have closed down Parliament in them years, he could not, because while ever there was an attack on Parliament, or they thought the King would move against Parliament, the people of London did take to the streets and did descend on Parliament in their hundreds and in their thousands, to the point where the King could not move and Parliament was saved. And there was even an incident where when the Archbishop of Canterbury was imprisoned by Parliament. Black Rod did try to effect his escape and did try to smuggle him out of London. The Archbishop of Canterbury, of course, loud, being a true tyrant as ever there was. And they tried to smuggle him out of London in a carriage. And it was noticed in Newgate by an apprentice who did raise the alarm and let everybody know thereabouts that the Archbishop was trying to escape in the carriage of the Black Rod. And everybody swelled around. At first a few people, and then tens of people, and then hundreds, and then a crowd of a thousand swelled around that carriage until it was escorted safely into the tower and the Archbishop of Canter Canterbury was once again in safely in imprisonment. The act of ordinary people, ordinary people rising up. And the reason why the King left London in the first place, why he fled London, was in fear of his own people. He had tried to impeach five members of Parliament and they had fled. And then the next day he went to a meeting with one of his constables, a man called Garnet, who was a rich man. And whilst at dinner with Mr Garnet, Sir Garnet, the king and the house was besieged by hundreds of ordinary people. And the king could not move in London because his carriage would be besieged by hundreds of people. To the point where on one incident, the alderman and the Lord Mayor of London was knocked off their horses by a group of housewives and had the ceremonial chains ripped from around their necks by these women. 
Such was their disdain for tyranny and disdain for the king and disdain for authority at that time. And the people barricaded the streets to stop the cavaliers from riding in. And the people took to the streets armed with cudgels and with pitchforks and with uh, their own rifles and patrolled the streets and were alert and took to the streets in their hundreds. And the waterfront was empty. All the shops were shut up. The shipyards were at a standstill and nobody worked for almost a week in January of 1642. The king had lost power. Power in the king's capital was in the hands of ordinary people. And he had no choice but to flee the capital, to pack his bags and his court hurriedly one night at the dead of night and to flee like the thief and the common scoundrel that the king is. And also make no fear that the first victories inflicted upon the army of the crown were not by an army of parliament, but by ordinary people. The royalists were forced out of Essex and Suffolk when the houses of the rich were ransacked and overcome by an uprising of ordinary people. The Marquis of Hertford was sent to the West Country where he had lands to raise an army for the crown and everywhere he went, ordinary people with pitchforks, with billhooks, with every weapon that they had to hand, met him and surrounded him to the point where he had to flee. And the towns of Bradford, the towns of Manchester, the towns of Birmingham were defended when they were besieged by cavaliers, not by the gentry who had fled, not by a parliamentarian army, one scarcely existed then, but they were defended verily by ordinary people flooding into them towns from thereabouts, armed with whatever weapon they had to hand, and inflicted such defeats on the crown. So make no mistake, brother, what we have here is as a result of an uprising, of disturbances, of an overturning of the people, where the people have their voice heard and the people will have their voice heard in Parliament. Because the land should be ruled not by one king and his fat wicked advisers, but by a Parliament. A Parliament not just elected by the, by the rich, but a Parliament elected by all people with interests of all people at heart. A Parliament that will bring in a world where all the earth is used as a common treasury for all men, not just for a few wealthy and despicable individuals.